Today's video will give an example of how to use the noun identification process. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. The noun identification process is the process of starting with a user story, then going to requirements, and finally get all the way down to program entities. And this can be a little bit difficult at first, so we'll show an example of this with a semi-real-world example. Okay, so let's take a look at how the noun identification process works. So we're going to have a mobile application that manage a credit card account. And so the credit card tracker application helps users keep track of their credit card usage so they can avoid late fees and manage their spending. This functionality is available on all popular mobile platforms where account status and spending habit reports are presented to the user the moment they are making purchase decisions. Okay, this is the kind of problem definition we get from stakeholders or from clients. It doesn't really imply any technology, any program entities, so we need to really dive down into more details as to how this is going to work. Now, from this problem definition, we have the following use case. The user adds a new purchase. Okay, that also can encompass many things. So we need to really dive down into more detail here. So I'm going to take the user adds new purchase, and I'm going to say a single transaction shall have an, a date, name, note, category, and amount. The user shall be able to add a new transaction to the register. Users shall be able to edit an existing transaction in the register, and the user shall be able to remove a transaction from the register. Now, when I give the stakeholder these requirements, they're going to talk about it, they're going to think about it, and they're going to give me some more detailed ones. So we have the one we had before. The user can download transactions from the bank. The user can add a transaction by taking a picture of a receipt. The user can change the status of a register. So these things are going to be more elaborate versions of what we had before, which the client can only answer after they have seen us kind of flush out the requirements in more detail. Consider the mobile financial application from our earlier example. And given the user adds a new purchase use case, the following requirement has been selected. A single transaction shall have a date, status, name, note, category, and amount. Now I want to convert this requirement into program entities. So I'm going to start with a word and phrase from the requirements, identify the part of speech, and then we're going to get a program entity from that. Now we have a single transaction, and that's going to be a proper noun, and that's going to be a variable or an object. So I'm going to say a transaction. Then I'm going to have and have is a having verb, which means what's going to follow are member variables, not just normal variables, but they belong to a transaction. I'm going to have a date, and a date is a common noun, and this is a class or a data type. So I'm going to say date. Now, what's the data type of this guy? It's going to be a date, which I have not yet defined. So therefore, I'm going to make a class called date. Now, I don't know anything about date right now, but that's okay. This is just the first step of the process. Next time you have a status, and a status is also a common noun. It's also a class or data type. And so I'm going to make a, a private member variable called status. What's his data type? Ooh, well, it's not an int. It's not a flow. It's probably going to be a status as well. And so therefore, any other class for that. We have a name. The name is a common noun. So that's going to be a name. And what's his data type? Well, I don't need to make a special name class. I'm just going to use text. So I don't need to go any further than that. The note. Also a common noun, it's going to be a member of a transaction. And so I'm going to have a private member variable called note. And what's it's going to be? Oh, once again, I think it's just going to be text. No further work is required. Now I'm going to have a category. And a category is a common noun. And so I'm going to have a private member variable called cat. And this is going to be a type. Hmm. Once again, I think I need to create my own custom data type. And I'll call this a category. So I'll have a new class diagram called category. And then an amount. And an amount is a common noun. And an amount for a transaction is going to refer to money. And money has all kinds of things associated with it. Like I can't have more than two decimal places I need to convert between. I have a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to make this a money type. And now we have money. Okay, so one requirement has given us five different classes. Let's take a look at another example here. Another requirement. So transactions are added to the register by prompting for a category, date, and amount. Okay, so I have my word or phrase, my part of speech, and my program entity. So I'm going to start with transaction, and that's going to be a proper noun, and it's a variable or an object. Added, so I'm going to do something with this. Okay, so added is an action verb, so I'm going to have list.add, and that's going to be my method. And it's going to take a transaction, which is from my previous item. Now I'm going to have a register. Now what exactly is a register? Well, it's a proper noun, so I need to have a register, which is going to be an object. And it's going to do stuff like add. 
And I also need to create a transaction as well, which is going to get added to my register. Now I'm going to have to prompt. Now prompt is an action verb. It's a function or method. So I'm going to transaction.prompt. And I'm going to prompt a category. Now notice that category is part of prompt for a category. So therefore, this is going to be a function or method where the whole thing is prompt for category. And therefore, I'm going to say category.select. For a date, I'm going to say date.select. And amount, I'm going to say money.prompt. And so each one of these are going to be part as me a prompt, which is a select prompt or, or select from a money category or date. And also all going to help me with my transaction. Okay, let's take a look at another requirement. The user can change the status of a transaction in the register. Okay, so I'm going to have my part of speech and my entity. So I'm going to say user. The user is a proper noun. Now this is going to be an external entity. So for a data flow diagram, we represent this as an interactor. And change, that's a verb, an action verb specifically. It's a function or method or a processor for a data flow diagram. And then I'm going to have a transaction. So I'm going to update the transaction. So that's going to be a proper noun. So it's going to be a data store. And it's going to get from the transaction. It's going to take the old transaction, update it, and send the new one. So the arrow goes both ways. In the register, so the transaction does not live by itself. It lives in something, a proper noun called a register. So that's going to be another data store. But how does the transaction get to the register? It doesn't go by itself. There must be an intermediary. And that intermediary is a processor, register to update and that's going to connect them all together. Now, this is example 2.7.1, .2.3, and .4 in the noun identification chapter of the software design textbook.